this notebook, we're going to have a look at sharp values. The main point of this notebook is going to be explainability. So we're going to go very quickly over the data prep, exploratory data analysis and model train. As a reminder, the machine learning problem is a classification problem and we're trying to predict whether an individual's income is above 50,000 US dollars. We're starting by loading in the libraries that we need and you can see that SHAP is one of the new libraries that we're going to use in this particular notebook. And then we're reading in the data set. So this is the census data that we're going to use. We have some very basic data processing and exploratory data analysis here. We're splitting between categorical and numerical features to treat them accordingly. A quick check to make sure that the model target is not part of the model feature list. And then we're looking at missing values and some basic plots here on the target distribution. We can see that in fact it's not a very imbalanced problem. Careful here though, we're not actually overlaying the different group memberships quite yet. So it could be that the target distribution looks very different for the different subpopulations that we have in our data set. For the feature distribution, we can look at our categorical features and plot them. And eventually we need to select the features that we want to use for the model, perform the train test and validation split, pass everything through pipeline and column transformer. And here again, as a quick reminder, you set up the different preparation steps for the numerical features, the categorical features, if you had text features, you could also set up a different preparation step for text features. And then eventually you combine all of them in the column transformer and add the model at the very end. Here we can see what it looks like. So we have imputation and scaling for the numerical features, imputation and one hot encoding for the categorical features. And then just to mix it up a little bit here, we're going to use a random forest classifier as our model. Again, the main point here is going to be to build the explanations. So we're not going to tune or try different versions of models. We're simply going ahead to train the classifier. We're going to validate on validation and test set. And at this point now, we're going to have a look at the SHAP values. One thing that we're going to do here is we're going to extract the new feature names from the pipeline. Keep in mind that when you one hot encode, you're actually creating many new columns. So if you want to understand more easily what the feature columns actually refer to, you can extract the feature names from the pipeline that we created earlier. Then we're going to take a small sample of data points that we want to create explanations for. And we're going to calculate the SHAP values. And now we're going to explore a few data points from our data set. So this is going to be one example. And what you can see here, first of all, is that we're predicting, again, as a reminder, class zero, class one. So we're looking at the probability of belonging to outcome class zero in this example, and the probability value is 0.557. The expected value is 0.596, and you can see how the different features add or subtract from that value to arrive at the final 0.557 value. You should also notice that you have certain features that have a positive contribution and other features that have a negative contribution. You can also tell what the feature value is or the class. So in the first row, you can see that schooling class 21 was positive. So this particular instance, this data point, this person did have schooling category 21, marital status five, and so forth. You can also see the numerical features in a scaled form, like the hours worked per week and the age. So you can see here that some features have a negative contribution, others have a positive contribution. And because we encoded the feature names earlier, we can also see them on the left hand side. So you would see indicated, first of all, what the feature value is as ones and zeros, or for the numerical features, you can see the scaled numerical form, and then also what category or what the column header refers to. 
What we should watch out here for is that there are no sensitive attributes in the list of top most important features because that would indicate that the model indeed pays a lot of attention to those sensitive attributes. And depending on the domain, this might not be okay. Now we're going to look at the data point number two in our data set and we can actually collapse that graphic into one line so rather than splitting out one row per feature we can also look at everything in one line and once again you have the bars that indicate how important the different attributes are. If we wanted to look at many sharp values next to one another we could turn the whole graphic and then plot each column here now referring to a different data point. So you can see here how the different sharp values are for the different data points in the range of 0 to 10. One additional plot that we want to look at here is the so-called b swan plot where we can see the different features, the feature values and also the sharp values all encoded in one graphic. So in the color coding, you see the feature value ranging from low to high. You can also see the sharp values on the X axis from low to high. And then on the Y axis, you have the different features. So here we can see that some feature values give a clear split between whether they have a positive or a negative impact on the sharp values. And then some features are more mixed. We could also look at the absolute sharp values. And finally, we're going to introduce a different data set and a different problem to demonstrate how to build sharp values for language. So here we're loading a pre-trained model. And into this pre-trained model, we pass one example sentence. We're going to get the prediction and then also the different features and highlighted in color, which of the words had a positive or a negative contribution. So what you might notice here is that the sentence what a great movie if you have no taste picks up on great as the biggest contributor to making this a positive prediction. However, you can also see that the particular model does actually not pick up on the sarcasm. The explanation, however, does identify no as a negative contribution. So the problem here is that actually the prediction is wrong because we're not detecting sarcasm. The explanation is decent because it does pick up on the positive and negative words as we would expect. Another example would be a horrible movie that I would never recommend to anyone. And you can see here now that horrible is correctly highlighted as bringing the base value down.